When I first learned about regenerative agriculture, the thing that got me the most interested was utilizing the natural biological systems that are around us and, and like understanding how soil actually functions and the amount of beneficial bugs and bacteria that are in the soil. My name is Jared Canole. We've been farming here, oh, almost 20 years. The family's been on this farm and we run a small cow-calf operation. You can see the, the cows back here and the calves, spring calves and last year's fall calves grazing. I think it was John Palliser that scouted this whole area. He basically said this is useless land, nothing will ever happen here. This place has always been grassland, historically, a lot of buffalo. We don't get a ton of rain here in the growing season. Uh, I think last year some guys got an inch and a half of rain on their crops, so not a lot. But what is kind of unique about this area or special is we have a ton of irrigation that we pull out of the Rocky Mountains. Talk about the five principles of soil health, you know, reducing disturbance in the soil. It's, it's keeping the soil covered as much as possible. Keeping a living root for as long as possible because you're getting that, that carbon pumped back into the soil. Those roots are um, interacting with your soil biology, your, your mycorrhizal fungi, all the beneficial bacteria in the soil. You're keeping that cycle going. Incorporating livestock back into it and plant diversity is another one. So there's, you can't hit all those areas necessarily at once, but you could, it's just steps. Like, hey, if you can reduce a tillage pass, for guys that are doing lots of tillage, that's a step. If you can maybe push back your post-harvest a little bit longer, so some of the regrowth is growing just for an extra couple of weeks, like that's a step. It doesn't need to be something that's all of a sudden doing things way different. It's these little tiny steps that you take and eventually instead of walking down this road, you start kind of curving over a little bit. For me, it comes from a point of doing the best that I can do to take care of the land that, that we have with the family farm. Grow high quality, crops to, to grow good cattle and nutritious food. You know, growing wheat and peas together is a silage crop. That's diversity. You know, it's, you don't need to go jump into a 14-way mix. That's something that I found valuable and had reasonable success with and have really liked the feed that comes out of those, those mixes. You know, it's, it's a start. Change one or two things, do it slow. Another thing is animal diversity. You know, I got the cattle here, we got a few sheep. It's more of a, like a hobby, but I've been playing around with pigs a little bit, trying to get just a different um, type of manure back on the land. I don't have any hog operations that are close enough to justify hauling manure back. So I'm like, hey, I'm gonna start small. I got six pigs, get that cycle rolling. You got a ton of different options. I've talked to some guys and they say, oh, you, you, can't, you can't farm without fertilizer or, or, or herbicides or something like that. And it's like, well, they, they've definitely added a certain amount of value to our current production methods. But if you look historically, we haven't had access to, to all those products. You look at any natural system in the environment, like there's, let's say there's 50 different species of animals and hundreds of different species of plants. Like it takes that whole variety to make that ecosystem go. So that's one of the things that I'm trying to work with here. Like we have the cattle, we have a few sheep. I've been working with some pigs now and trying to just build up the diversity on the farm in terms of animals, but also in terms of plant diversity and trying to just build a, a healthy ecosystem where you have beneficial bugs, beneficial bacteria. But the challenge is, is you don't have access to a lot of tools that you would normally, per se, in agriculture. And it's not, it's not like it's going full organic and you have no access to, say, using herbicides when you need to or supplementing with some fertilizer because, I mean, I still do that as well. It's not like I'm completely off of it. It's just the re I've been able to reduce those inputs significantly. One of the challenges, a little bit more specific to growing like a multi-blend is, you know, you're growing anywhere from say three to 14 different species together. So if you do have a weed flush that comes through, you don't have really any options to spray it. And if you do spray it, you're gonna wipe out 90% of what you put in there besides say your, your main uh, cereal crop. It's not like a, you can just make a right turn and all of a sudden you're there. You gotta really build up your soil. Your soil has to change. You have to incorporate different practices. Uh, incorporating the animals into it for some operations, that's a, that's a huge step. If you're not set up for cattle and you wanna have cattle, it's not, you don't just go to the sale barn and pick up cattle. If you don't have fences, you don't have corrals, you don't have water bowls, like there's, it's a completely different way of thinking about production. But if you're looking at trying to build up the smaller farm again and more locally grown food and trying to support your community that way. I think it's a phenomenal
production methodology. Try one thing at a time, but know that it takes multiple aspects to bring the whole operation together. It's a long game. It's about growing over years, you know, if in this area, well, in Western Canada, I don't know, the average farmer is probably like 65 or 70. You know, say if you start farming when you're, you're 20 and you're gonna farm till you're 80, you got, that's 60, 60 tries you got, you got 60 seasons. That's the time that, that you're farming the land and someone's farmed it before you and someone's gonna farm it after you. And, you know, I think we need to take care of the land that we do have and make it as productive as it can be, but also make it last as long as it can. We gotta take care of what we have.